If you're a beginner leather worker and you wanna start using a leather sewing machine, stick around, cause you're gonna wanna see this one through to the end. The truth is, industrial sewing machine companies aren't exactly catering to the beginner market. They're making powerful, efficient machines for serious manufacturing. The closest thing that you'll probably get to a beginner machine, in my opinion, is that Sailrite Stitch Master that I did a review on a few years ago. I say this because it's really easy to learn on and it's a little more affordable than a true production level machine. But if you ever plan on going beyond the occasional hobby projects, I'm gonna recommend you get something a little more serious. The bottom line is there aren't really beginner level machines and expert level industrial machines. There are just a lot of different types of machines with a lot of different uses. You've got post beds, double needles, bar tack machines, serger and overlock machines, harness stitchers. If you're a leather worker looking to do work that's similar to what we do, I recommend you get a heavy duty, straight stitch walking foot machine. And I know a lot of you were expecting me to recommend this machine, but I'm not, which is why I wanted to make this video because a lot of people have bought this exact machine because of me without getting the full story. And don't get me wrong, Juki makes amazing machines. They're the Cadillac of industrial sewing machines, the OGs. Most other machines out there are just clones of Jukies. So why don't I recommend this one? A speed reducer. This machine doesn't come with one, so I had to install it myself. This is a big pulley that adds more torque to the machine and slows it way down. But it just so happens this machine doesn't like a speed reducer. It's mostly because of this oil pan right here. I can't get the belt on the lowest gear, which would give me the most torque and the slowest speed. But even that doesn't bother me as much. I'm happy with it being on this middle speed right here, but because of where the oil pan is, it's nearly impossible to get this thing lined up just right to allow it to turn freely and work properly, especially without sounding like this. The good news is that there are companies out there that are making machines with the speed reducers already installed on them. Like my Texo 2750 already has a reducer on it. This machine is a clone of the Juki 341, as well as the Cobra Class 26, the Cowboy CB 341, and there's a few others. As well as this machine, my Cobra Class 3. This is a clone of the Juki 441 as well as the Cowboy 3200 and 4500 and the Texo 4100 and 5100. This is a harness stitcher machine and it comes with this speed reducer already installed. Especially when you pair it up with a really nice brushless servo motor like this machine has, you get none of those alignment issues, none of the machine shake, especially at low speeds, none of that vibration. It just works smooth as silk. I always try and explain, it doesn't matter as much to me what logo is on the front of the machine. What matters is that you have the right class or type of machine for the type of work that you're gonna be doing. So if you're a big footwear guy and you're mostly just gonna be sewing shoe and boot uppers, I would recommend getting a post bed machine. If you're mostly just gonna be working on Western tack, I'd recommend a harness stitcher like this. But if you're gonna be sewing mostly small leather goods like wallets and passport covers and folios and even bags, I've got a recommendation for you. And it's actually twofold. Two different classes of machines. I would recommend the Cobra Class 20 or the Cobra Class 26. And by the way, this is not a sponsored ad for Cobra. In fact, at the time of posting this, I don't even have an affiliate link or anything like that. So. No skin in the game here. I'm giving you my honest opinion. But I love the Cobra machines because as I mentioned before, they come right out of the gate ready to go. You've got the speed reducer already installed and properly aligned right from the factory. You get all the right accessories, the smooth presser feet, all that kind of good stuff. But you also get that sweet, sweet, smooth brushless servo motor. Not all the sewing machine companies use good servo motors. Sometimes you've got the family motors that are really abrupt and kind of shaky, especially at the lower speeds. With that brushless motor they use, it's smooth as butter. Okay, but why did I recommend two different machines? Well, both of those classes have their pros and cons, but I'm gonna help you make a good decision. The class 20, which is the flat bed, it's at a much more comfortable level to sit at. It's a lot more user friendly, especially if you're working with wallets or big flat pieces. It's really nice having that flat bed. But if you have even the slightest thought that you might wanna do some gussets, bag work, anything with tricky angles in it, I recommend getting the Cobra Class 26. That cylinder arm is crucial for getting around tricky areas. And you can even spend a little bit more and get the flatbed attachment that goes onto it. 
it's not perfect, but that way you kind of get the best of both worlds. If you don't feel like you can afford a couple thousand dollars to get a new machine, you can always buy a used one. But it is going to be hard to find the right one. And the point of this video is to recommend a machine for a beginner. If you're a beginner, I'm guessing you're not going to really know your way around a machine and want to get into fixing them, repairing them, building it out to fit your needs. So if you can afford it, I recommend just buying a new one and having it ready to go. Again, I can't stress this enough. It doesn't matter as much what logo is on the front of the machine. You could get Texo, Cobra, Cowboy, Adler, Weaver, Juki, and get perfectly great machines. What's most important is that you're getting the right class or type of machine and that it's all set up for the type of work that you plan on doing. If you have any questions about this, leave them down in the comments and I'm gonna try and get to all of them that I can because I don't want you to waste money buying the wrong machines like I did. I know that it can be intimidating getting into the sewing machine world. So let me know what questions you have and I'll help you out if I can. And uh, click this video right here. I've got a lot more helpful, valuable stuff if you're trying to get into the craft and learn. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate your support. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.